It was only because of my own arrogance that I couldn't come up with the answer until I went to visit. And then I realized, my God, they need, they want, and they need exactly what we do, which is to make a living. So we came up with the three fundamentals which define a person's uh, well-being. And on those three, everything else is built. And they were electricity, water, and health. If you have those three, and you have, you're not lazy, hmm. you'll be fine. You'll make a living. You know, asking the right question is the biggest issue. You have to know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you can't do it. So the thing that everybody has to learn how to do is make sure that the questions are correct. For example, if somebody says, what's the most efficient way to dig this hole? Right? You say, is it shovels, is it bulldozer, what is it? The real thing you should ask is, why do we need a hole? <laughs> or is there a better way to get, what are you trying to do first? Is a giant problem, and everybody knows this. As global economies advance, so does global demand for water. But we only have a fixed supply of the precious resource. The UN says two-thirds of the world's people will live in water-stressed areas by 2025. The result of increasing demand, increasing populations, and the effects of climate change. I don't think most people realize that only 1% of the water on the planet is actually uh, clean water. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, one out of every ten human beings on the planet do not actually have access to safe, clean drinking water. Is it a public responsibility or is it a private responsibility? I think the answer is going to be a combination of both, but somebody's got to take the lead. If in a village, the only water you have is water that's not really fit to drink, you can't say, I'm not going to drink water. you got to get clean water. It's not a really a choice. Or you're going to be sick. More than half the population of hospitals around the world are people that are sick from bad water. Unclean water is the epidemic. All other health initiatives have marginal value. Water is health care. It's as simple as that. What we were working on two years ago was Rainmaker, which was the big unit that converted seawater to fresh water. We're still working on it and we've made huge strides. We've reduced it down its size by 75%. Even though it looks really complicated, this is after years of making it simple. <laughs> A couple years ago, we thought turning ocean water to fresh water was really critical. Then came along something else. There are huge pockets of people, tens of millions, hundred million, that have tons of brackish water, but they have a really hard time with getting fresh water. What brackish water is, is this. In a huge part of the world, when you dig a well, what you'll get is this water, which is slightly salty and filled with minerals. It's not for drinking and you can't use it for agriculture. That's what the brackish water is. It's sort of like uh, seawater light. And amazingly, it's all over the world. We've figured out a way to turn brackish water into fresh water, both for drinking and for agriculture. We call it the rainmaker for brackish water. It's basically a water filtration system we've developed for use at the village level. The whole unit is pretty small, completely self-contained, and requires very little power. Pretty much the amount you need to run a hairdryer. 